Thank you for listening to Calvary Aurora's weekly Bible study. We pray as you study through God's Word that you're blessed by God's abounding grace. Sixth and Chambers, and it snowed. I am home. 37 years ago, Jesus took me to Amarillo by morning, Texas, and uh, I I love Amarillo, but I really love, if I say like Rocky Mountain High, John Denver, the snow-capped mountains this morning, and it's just good to be back with family and home. By the way, it snowed here. Uh, It snowed three inches in Amarillo, Texas today. So in case you think that's down south somewhere, Amarillo is only 400 miles from here, and uh, they're having the snow while we are. But uh, I, I really love being here because uh, I love your pastor uh, as a dear, dear, dear friend. I write his name in my Bible every day. I pray for this church. I love this church. Um, the reason why is because you guys love Jesus, right? Uh, you love Jesus. Um, <clears throat> you, you also, you love his word. And that's how he speaks to us. And on top of that, you love the Holy Spirit. And probably today you're hoping to get, you know, like a a fresh connection, a fresh anointing, uh, a freshness from the Lord. I am. I mean, that's why I'm here. I I need Jesus like today. So I'm so grateful for the gospel and the history and what happened at the cross. But I'm also grateful for the gospel that I need that fresh touch from Jesus like, like now. Can I invite you to turn your Bibles to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. If you've got one of those seatback Bibles, it's on page uh, 842. Uh, Make sure you track with me a little bit there. Page 842, 1 Peter chapter 2, and looking at verse 4. Verse 4. Coming to him, coming to Christ, coming to him as to a living stone. Rejected, indeed, by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Father, how we thank you today for your word, that you actually have recorded it, written it down, preserved it, Lord, for all of us here today. We've got a copy of it. We thank you for this portion of your word today, about the living stone, about the Lord Jesus Christ, and how we're living stones built on him in a spiritual house. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would communicate the truth of this passage to my heart, to our hearts, Lord, that we might have a fresh touch of the gospel today in our lives. And the part that we play on this spiritual, this house, Lord, that it might be more vibrant for you. I pray that you would rock the house and that we would rock because of the rock Jesus Christ today. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We invite your presence actually physically to this place, again in our hearts spiritually. We invite the Holy Spirit to anoint. I just pray, Lord, for a close encounter of the right kind with Jesus Christ today. For my life and my friends here, that he might receive all of the honor and all of the glory. And all of God's people would say, if you haven't figured it out, I want to preach today about the rock, not a rock, but the rock And the rock is Christ. I brought up this rock from Amarillo, Texas. It weighs about 80 pounds. It represents the Lord Jesus Christ. I I carried it in here with one arm. Okay, I just lied to you. Got two of your big guys. Did you notice that, like, the guns on these guys? Anyways, this rock represents Jesus Christ because the passage starts with coming to him, coming to him as to a living stone. If, if you look up the word rock in the scriptures, you'll, you'll find the first time it's mentioned is back in Exodus chapter 17. The nation of Israel, they're wandering out, uh, coming from Egypt. They're in the wilderness. They're, they're very, very thirsty. They're run, they've run out of water. 
Moses, do something. We're going to actually dive dehydrate. You got to do something. Moses goes to God and God tells him, first time the word rock shows up in your Bible. Take your staff, strike the rock. And from it will come this river of water, this life. And sure enough, as far-fetched as that sounds, Moses, when he obeyed the word of God and he struck the rock, from that rock came physical water. They didn't die. They were refreshed. Oh, but we know because of 1 Corinthians 10, it was also spiritual water. It was a spiritual drink. And that rock followed them. Somehow that river of life followed them throughout their wandering. And 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that that rock was Christ who was struck on that cross so that from him, that river of life might flow to you. That, that's actually the gospel. Can I hear an amen for the gospel? That started as a type with a physical rock that represented Christ. That's why when Jesus in John chapter 7, standing up and said, if anyone is thirsty, let him keep coming and keep drinking from me. Now we know with the woman at the well, he told her, if you thirst, drink from this well, you'll never thirst again. But then John chapter 7, he says, oh, but there's this other part of the rock. That when you're thirsty, maybe not for salvation, but you're just thirsty, you're dry. Come to me, keep drinking, keep coming. And from your innermost being, from your belly, from your heart, will flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the Holy Spirit that they were to receive. Question, I, I know you love Jesus. I know you love his word. But like, is there a river of life coming out of you right now? Do people find themselves refreshed from you? And you might say, well, sometimes. Well, I'm just saying, I really want a fresh connection with the rock and a fresh drink of the gospel. I want a fresh Anointing of the Holy Spirit so that everybody around me kind of gets wet, refreshed. Are you tracking with me? It's okay. I know this is first. So can you just shake your head? I hear that. Whoa, way to go, wherever that's coming from. Isn't God so good that, that even when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, there's an, there's an answer. When we come to this living stone, Way, way back in 19, well, I don't want to put my foot on Jesus. Way back, way back in 1972, I was 16 years old, Commerce City, Colorado, big motorcycle guy. Back then I was a 16-year-old skinny motorcycle guy. I was riding my 1969 Honda 350 that I thought was the coolest bike in the world on a Saturday morning. And I flipped that bike, I actually flipped that bike about 40 miles an hour upside down on top of me. And I'm telling you, I should have died. And I found myself between a rock and a hard place. And that's when Jesus came to me in a very specific way, no preacher, no radio, no church. He came and found me. He said, Bill, you just need to give up. I'm coming after you. And I used to fight against the Lord. I used to struggle. And I never wanted to say what I call the big yes. Like, okay, I just give up. I did on that day. And my sisters are here this morning. They can actually testify. I've never been the same since. I have never been the same since. That's 45 years ago. Can I tell you, when Jesus rocks your world, when you're between a rock and a hard place, it changes everything. Amen? You say, well, why did that happen? Because Jesus actually in his own rock and hard place. And we might think, well, that was the cross of Calvary. Or maybe it was the tomb when, when all of a sudden, you know, the rock is in a rock sealed with a rock. 
Can, can I tell you the rock and the hard place of the tomb was not a problem for Christ. The rock, the hard place for Christ was on that cross when he actually bore my sins and the wrath of the Father being poured out on. That's when Jesus Christ did the hard price, the hard place for me and set me free. Jesus Christ in that gospel, that salvation, what I received in 1972, that's when he conquered it all. Amen? Finished the work. By the way, the stone on the tomb that was rolled away, that was not for Jesus to get out. That was to let the people in. Jesus doesn't have a hard place anymore. He already took care of that. But maybe you're in a hard place today. Maybe you're between a rock and a hard place. And it might be salvation. God's actually put you in a place, allowed you to be in a place to where you need to say the big yes. Or maybe it's another thing after salvation to where we need to reconnect with him or I need another fresh drink from him. You see, what I'm sharing with you is I need Jesus today. I've been saved, sealed, going to heaven. But I need a fresh drink. I need the gospel today. Amen? So we come to him as to a living stone. He knows how to rock the house. Jesus knows how to rock the house. Notice what the text says. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen, chosen by God and precious. You also, Calvary Chapel Aurora, you also, as living stones. Can I hear you say living stones? Oh, he is the living stone, but we are living stones. You're rockheads. The goal of the message, I I want you to be stoned on Jesus. We're supposed to be living stones. Notice what it says. You also as living stones, not singular, plural. We're in this together. You also as living stones are being built up as a a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yes, the whole thing is about Christ, the living stone. Oh, but then he has this beautiful plan as he calls us, as he saves us with the gospel in a rock and hard place. Then we find out that he wants to rock the house. He actually wants to build a temple. He wants to have a body. He wants to have a group of people. We call it the church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the people who are living stones being built upon him and that we're a holy priesthood. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. We actually have something to do for Christ. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I know that's, uh, what, what are you talking about? We're stones. We're living stones on the living stones being built up together in him. And when you get saved and you grow in him, you find out I'm a rock on the rock and he's doing something with my life and then you find out you're not alone there's another rock connected to that other person that other rock and and he she is on this living stone and he's actually building a spiritual house in the old testament they had a tabernacle they had a temple under the new covenant under grace in jesus You're the temple. We're the house. We're the priesthood. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. We're the people of God. That rocks. We don't get the glory. He gets the glory. He's the chief cornerstone. He is the living stone. Oh, but then we come along And because of the life he gives, this dead rock is now a living stone. But not alone. I have all these stoners with me. And now we get high on Jesus. 
And when we go back out into the world, uh, whether they come to this building or not, guess what? They're in the presence of living stones, of priesthood, offering up spiritual sacrifices. And at school, at work, wherever you might be, even on the bus, there might be, how am I getting wet? How am I being refreshed? It's because God is pouring through us the very Holy Spirit, that just the way we are connected to him and growing in him. Oh, no, wait a minute, preacher. I just got saved at Easter two weeks ago. Well, great. You're still a living stone, but you're just really small. You're still on this foundation, and you're going to grow over time. And you say, no, 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 I'm only seven years old. Well, great, I'm glad you're seven. You can know Jesus at seven. And, and you're actually a, a rockhead, too. You're right, you're still there. You're going to just watch. Give it time, you're going to grow. And you say, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been saved six years. You've been saved six years? And you're only this big, something's wrong. Oh, you might be going to heaven, but six years. Well, what do I, hey, let's cooperate with the Lord. Let's cooperate with the word of God. Let's get connected better to the other living stones. You will grow by God's grace. And you say, well, I'm just a little tiny. You can be on here too. In Christ. You're already there. If you're in Christ, if you're in the gospel, you've received that, you're already part of it. And you say, no, I didn't join this church. I'm not talking about joining a local church. I'm talking about you're joined to Christ. You're, you're in the deal. Amen? I, I didn't know that when I got saved. When I got saved, I just didn't want to go to hell because I was supposed to die that day. And so I, I just want to go to heaven. So I said the beginning, I had no idea that right away I'm connected to this body, to this bride, to this organism called the church. And I found myself wanting to get, wanting to get more connected, wanting to get to know people better. That, that's what I love about, you know, Calvary Chapel Aurora. Let's, hey, this, this thing's alive. You guys, it's okay for you guys to say amen. This thing's alive. You are alive. You're, you're growing individually. You're growing numerically. You, your, your impact is having it. God is using you as a holy priesthood. Spiritual sacrifices. Your life together counts. Your life by itself counts. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm thanking you. You say, why are you thanking us? Because I don't live here anymore. My family comes to this church. Thank you. Be alive. Grow in the Lord. Let, it's, all the glory goes to Christ. But as we cooperate, well, guess what? The water comes out of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? He rocks the house. And we are the house. Because the rock is precious. Oh, he is precious. It's three times in the passage. Notice what it says. Let me back up a little bit there in verse 4. Coming to him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen. Oh, Christ is chosen by God and precious. Can I hear you say precious? Okay, you're catching on a little bit. I'll give you a couple of the t- chances here. Look at verse 6. Therefore, it is also contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. Can I hear you say precious? Precious. Oh, you're getting better. One more chance here. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Verse 7, therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. Can I hear you say precious? Precious. He is precious. Amen. Three times I got, he's precious, he's precious, he's precious. That, That word actually means in the Greek, precious, to be held in honor, to be prized. And I bet everybody in the room, everybody in the room, if I came to you and said, is Jesus Christ precious? That we would all say after three, you know, testimonies there in the word, we would all say, yes, Jesus Christ is precious. But if I came into your personal life, practically, is Jesus precious? To you. I'm talking practically, like on Tuesday. Is he really held in honor? Is he the number one prize of your life on Tuesday? Not Sunday morning, not Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. 
Is he practically precious in your life? To illustrate it, I've got this jar, <clears throat> little beaker thing, and, and this would represent 24 hours of, of your day. And by the way, you've already used up some of the space today, but tomorrow it'll be empty. And you've got 24 hours. All of us will have the same amount of space and time. Reminded of Moses, what Moses said in Psalms 90. Moses said, oldest Psalm, by the way. Moses said, teach us to number our days. And what you do with your day, what you put in your day, I guarantee at the end of Monday, this thing will be completely full. So when you get up, when I get up, there's things that are non-negotiable to us. I call them our big rocks, okay? And so like in this jar, and I had to test it beforehand to make sure it would work. I hope this all, barely, 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 okay. Those are the three big rocks. And by the way, that won't fit in your day. That won't fit in your day. So you say, okay, okay, what, why are you trying to show? Because everybody in the room, everybody in the room, you have things that you, what your big rocks are. I don't know what they are, but you probably know what your big rocks are. It might be marriage. Marriage might be one of your big rocks. It might be your children. It might be one of your big rocks. It might be your health. It might be money. It might be your job. But we all have big rocks. You do. And you make sure that those go in first, non-negotiable. And life would be great if all you had to do was walk, walk around with your three big rocks. Oh, no, but that's not life. You know it. What's going to happen tomorrow, the remainder of the day? Well, I got my big rocks in. But then comes all these little rocks, the rocks that you don't even really want. You don't mind them too much. You, you understand they're there. You got to pay the bills. You got to be nice to the neighbor. You got to go to church, you know. You, although church, well, I'm going to keep going here. And so you got all this, all this other stuff, like hundreds of things, hundreds of things. And it takes up the rest of your space. Oh, I made a mess last night too. You say, there it is. That, that's why about five o'clock, you know, you got your rocks in, but then you got all this other stuff, all this stuff. And you start thinking, man, I'm just ready to go home. I am just ready to chill out. Oh, but then comes this other stuff. The stuff you didn't expect. And you say, no, I'm already full. God, I can't take no more. The phone rings. The neighbor comes over. The children show up. Wasn't expecting it. And then God has a way, your life has a way of shaking, shaking, shaking. And then it's like, no, wait, 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 wait. Now I know I can't take any more. I, I, I know I can't. It is absolutely guaranteed I got to go to bed. You ever have a life like that? Like last week? You say, I, I don't, I don't want to live like that. Well, I don't want to live that way either. But you know, it's like, wow. But then on some days, on some days, this other thing happens. When you say, no, I can't take it. I can't take any more. I can't take it. Well, then this other deal happens. And you say, there's no room left. Oh, you want to bet that there's no room left? And then this thing that just is pouring into you, and it's like, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. It's like I'm overflowing, and then it seeps out. And then, Lord, I really, this is when it feels like I can't breathe. This is when it's like I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. This is when you have the nervous breakdown. This is when you can go into depression. This is when you can be like suicidal. This is when it's like I, I'm just going to, I'm going to give up. And I'd like to say, hey, come to Jesus, and that never happens anymore. That's not true. Come to Jesus, your life will be full, it will be jam-packed, and at times you'll think, I can't even breathe. So what's the point? The big rocks have to go in first. The big rocks have to go in first. And I have to look at my life practically. And I have to examine, is Jesus 
my big rock? Is he precious to me? Do I hold him in honor? Is he prized in my life practically? Then I have to figure out whatever it takes to make sure he goes in to my life practically first. Over marriage, children, money, health, job, has to. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about sanctification. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about a river of life so that my wife can really like (laughs) be blessed by me. So my kids would like to follow me so that I can have a good time at Calvary Chapel Aurora. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually having a good time. And you say, hey, why are you having such a good time? Because I got with my number one rock today, and it's Jesus Christ. And I was really honest with him. I need a fresh drink. I need a fresh anointing. I need you. I need you to be in my life first and foremost. And then everything from there can flow out from him. Are you tracking with me? And you say, well, you got it down. I don't have it down. I don't have it down. Did you know you can read your Bible and not have the rock in the right place? You can preach a sermon and not have the rock in the right place. You can go to church and not have that fresh anointing by making sure the Lord Jesus in that first prized priority place of your life. And I'm still working on it. But he is so faithful. He is so true. Lord, would you please help my friends? Would you help me? Get this to where you're number one in our lives. Not just salvation 45 years ago, but sanctification today. Because this dead rock wants to be a living stone in the power of the Holy Spirit to the pleasure of God the Father and the honor of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I would hope we all want to do that. I think a lot of us are on that track. I think maybe, maybe all of us. But you know, there's, there's some people that say, now wait a minute, wait a minute. I just came, I, I don't know about that because you're, you're talking like it's like him number one. That's what I'm saying. No, you're like, no, I got these other, I got these rocks that I'm holding on to and there's no way I'm going to let go of this rock. Oh, really? Because you need to know what's precious, what's precious in the Word of God. And I hope it's precious practically to you. You need to know that Jesus Christ is offensive to people, religious people. And what I'm saying is, is like really radical. If you haven't figured it out, I'm a Jesus freak. I'm just a Jesus freak. Okay? I'm a rockhead for Jesus. I want to rock with him. All that kind of stuff. But to some people, no, no, they just... Hold on there, preacher boy. Just hold on. Don't get so looped out. Just be biblical with us. I want to be biblical. There's people offended by what I'm saying. We're on the radio. They're probably out there going, that guy is, just shut him off. There might be somebody here. They were all around Jesus because he is. He's offensive. Notice what it says. Verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe, I pray that you really, really, really do believe. He is precious. Amen. But to those who are disobedient, the stone with which the builders rejected. He had said that up in verse 4. Rejected indeed by men. And then he says again from Psalms 118. The stone which the builders, they actually rejected him. Well, he's become, Christ has become the chief cornerstone. And Isaiah chapter 8, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumbled being disobedient, disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Are you telling me there's people, religious people, that reject Jesus Christ? Of course there are. He came unto his own, his own received him not. The nation of Israel officially rejected him. By the way, I'm a big, big, I I love the nation of Israel. I've been over there seven times. I believe they will come back. By the word of God, I believe that Israel, the Jews, are going to come back. But you need to know they rejected him. You can be in the greatest religion going and reject the Christ that stands in front of you. You can be disobedient to the rock. Why would anybody be disobedient to the rock? Why would people stumble over him? Why would he be offensive? By the way, the word offense, 
a rock of offense, that comes from the Greek word scandalon. That's where we get the word scandal. Jesus is a scandal to many people, disobedient people, people who reject him. He's, that word scandalon actually means a trap or a snare. It, it comes from the word a movable stick, a trigger of a trap. People think, no, if I give it all to Jesus, if he's my number one rock, that's going to be a trap. He's, he's going to take something away. I won't have my favorite big rocks. And they, they see like even this sermon, it's like, hey, there's no way. It sounds scandalous to me. But what are your big rocks? Do you mean like the rocks you crush up and snort? Or the rocks you shoot in your arm? Or what you drink on the rocks? What, are you afraid to give that over to Jesus for him to be number one? Or the rock you'd like to wear in your finger and show all the other ladies, like, you know, see my rock? Or what, your rock and roll, whatever that might be? Jesus wants to be your number one rock. There comes a point where you just say, okay, Lord, I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm going to trust you with all my rocks. Like even my religious rock. You know, there is a, I, I call it churchianity. Churchianity. People actually think, well, church. Church isn't your rock. Christ is your rock. Sometimes I think even with the word Christianity, we, we miss what that word's really trying to say. So I, I want to be jesus anity, rocky anity, Christianity. One like Christ is what Christianity means. One like Christ. I want to be like Christ. It's a privilege to call ourselves Christians. He's number one in our lives. You say, Pastor Bill, no, no, my, my life isn't so bad. It might be full. I got all this stuff in it. it, it, it it's okay. I mean, my rocks aren't bad rocks. My rocks, I think, are, are good rocks. They're, they're okay rocks. Really? Really? They might be. Matter of fact, you might have the best family, the best kids, making the most money. Your health is great. And you say, no, 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 no. There's nothing wrong. I'm not depressed. I'm not taking drugs. I mean, my life's good. Well, great, great. Hang on. It won't stay that way. And everybody, whether they're the best rocks or the bad rocks, there's a point in time when your life is going to have to meet up with this, like the rock. You say, well, for whatever reason, I just don't want to. Well, you know what? There's going to be a point in time. And in the book of Matthew, Jesus said this, Matthew 21, 44, and whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder and say, no, 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 no. I do all this stuff. Yeah, but you see, if Christ is offensive, is he actually a rock of offense? It's only a matter of time. It's a mess. I was holding it together. Things were fine. He'll never be the same again. I thought it would work. Have you ever had that happen to you? I can take you for a motorcycle ride when you think it's okay. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey. Or how many times after you're a believer and you have the gospel in your life and you think, and, and then, but it's still something, something, something. And then we come along with a psychiatrist, mumbo jumbo, some kind of bill. And maybe I can just, enough therapy and maybe, maybe. Oh man, it's really bad now. You know what's great about this? Hang with me, watch. Did you know the gospel, the power of Christ, the Holy Spirit, 
the body of Christ can fix that, can heal you, can put you back together again to where you can function with the right rocks of Jesus in place, can make you whole again. Isn't the power of the gospel amazing? It's amazing. So what are you saying? In case you feel like this, hey, now listen, if you ignore it and ignore it, you ignore Christ that it's only a matter of time. then it really is over. He wants to rock your world. Jesus, the rock, wants to rock your world. Notice what it says. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. Oh, but look at verse 9. But, but, but. I love the contrast. That's the ones who reject. That's the one where Christ is a scandal. But you, you are a chosen generation. Can I hear you say the word chosen? Oh, come on now. We got some more. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Can I hear you say the word royal? You're chosen. You're royal. A holy nation. Can I hear you say holy? His own special people. Can I hear you say special? Oh, no. What's that actually saying? Hey, the ones with Christ, the ones with the gospel, the ones that have this right with him, you are chosen. You're royal. You're holy. You're special. You, my friends, are a chosen generation. You, my friends, are a royal priesthood. You're you're the holy nation. You're special people. Check out later Exodus chapter 19. God made that promise to the nation of Israel if they would keep the old covenant. They couldn't keep the old covenant. So Jesus comes with the new covenant. And guess what? With the new covenant, whosoever will may come. What do we end up being when we come to Christ, to the gospel, the power of Jesus being number one in our lives? What are we? You're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen people. You're a holy nation. That was all the talk given to Israel and now given to us. You have a great pastor. You have a great, great pastor. But he's not your priest. You're a holy priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a royal, royalty, all of us together. Oh, he is your pastor, but he doesn't have to intercede for you. The great high priest Jesus Christ does. Amen? You're chosen. Matter of fact, that's where I say rocks. You mean, no, no, I'm just from Commerce City, Colorado. You're chosen, Bill. You're telling me I'm a royal priesthood? Yes, you are royalty. No, I used to work at Hilo. I was just a sacker. No, you're royalty. I'm part of a holy nation. You're part of a holy nation. This isn't just about Aurora or Amarillo. You're part of this global holy thing. And by the way, you're special. That's what it says. Your own special people i got to be careful with this one. But you have my permission. Sometime today, just go into your bathroom, you know, all by yourself, close the door, look in the mirror and say, you're special. Now, don't let that go to your head. But you are special. To Christ, you're holy. You're royal. You're chosen. To do what? A river of life flowing out of you. So people might know who you've been drinking from. Notice that you, Calvary Chapel Aurora, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light, who once were not a people. You once were not a people, but now you are the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. You get to proclaim, you get to herald with your mouth, with your life, these great praises of what God's done for you. You used to be in darkness, but now you're in light. You once were not a people, but now you are the people. And the people around you just looking at you and watching you should be able to say, hey, what makes you so special? The rock. What makes you so? Because I drank from him today. Why are you? Well, he's number one in my life. In over 45 years, that can make a big difference. Hear me again. 
I am still working on this myself. But when I stop and think, now wait a minute, what's happened to my life in 45 years? It's unbelievable. I was a nobody. I'm still a nobody. I was an idiot. I'm still an idiot. But God says, watch what I can do with the foolish vessel. vessel. Watch, watch what I can do with that. I can take him to Amarillo by morning. And with the word of God and the spirit of God, and my number one rock. We can start a church in a gas station with 17 people 32 years ago. I'd never heard of Calvary's. I don't need Calvary's. I got everything I need with the rock and the word and Holy Spirit. I didn't know that. I was scared to death. That's 32 years ago. It's amazing what God can do with this rock on that rock for his glory. And if you don't know, you're sitting right in the middle of it in Aurora with Pastor Ed and living stones all around you. We just need to get him and keep him where he needs to be. Amen? I love you guys. I really do. I love you. You know, I'm on your board. I love this church. I want us all to live for his glory. Father, thank you for your word today. And uh, the Holy Spirit today, Lord, to speak to us things from the word as well as illustrations and sermons. Lord, you know the things we struggle with. You know what we're going through and all the heartaches, Lord, and times where we can't breathe. But you've given to us your son and then the opportunity, Lord, every day with the Holy Spirit and a fresh drink from Jesus to be refreshed, to get through Sunday and then Monday with Jesus Christ first and foremost in our lives. There's a chance you're here today and you've never, ever made that decision. You've never accepted. You've never said yes. It can happen in a field in Commerce City, Colorado, or it can happen in a church in Aurora. It's like the Lord comes and knocks on the door of your heart and says, hey, it's not that pastor talking to you, it's me. I want to be your savior, your rock. And all you have to do is say yes. It is your responsibility to receive, or as so many do, some reject. Man, I would beg you to say yes to Jesus today. Maybe you're here and you've been so far disconnected from him that you know you're dry. You know you got the wrong rocks in your life and you want a fresh start. Or maybe you're here and you're just tired and your life is like that jar and you just need Jesus like now. I just want to invite whoever you might be just to stand so I can pray for you, whether it's salvation, rededication, or you just need a drink from the Lord. Is there anybody here this morning, first service, just by standing? Thank you, sister. You know what? I need that rock in my life. Thank you, brother. Like now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you back there. This is for the Lord. It's not for me. I'll be here afterwards. There'll be pastors up here afterwards if you want to come and pray. You've got questions. But this is just like, hey, I just need Christ like right now. I thought I was just coming to church, but I, I, need, I need him right now. Thank you, sister, there in the back. And thank you over here to the side. Anybody else? Thank you guys back there. I see you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sisters. Lord, you know our hearts, whether we stand or remain seated. Would you be the number one rock? 
in my life today. And these, my friends, Lord, would you be first prized, precious in our lives today. Bless Calvary Chapel Aurora, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and a river of life that comes from the rock of Jesus. For these friends that stand, Lord, refresh them, I pray, greatly, greatly with Jesus today. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Thank you for first loving us. Pray that you would be pleased as we leave this place for your honor, for your glory, as we proclaim the great praises of him who saved us. That you might receive it, Lord, not we. Come quickly. It's in the name of Jesus we would ask. Amen. Thank you, guys. We pray that you've been touched by this study from Calvary Aurora. For prayer or a copy of this study, call area code 303-628-7200. Be blessed this week in the Lord.